Hello everyone and welcome to our Freundship video series. My name is Lisa McKenzie and I work for Scottish Development International in our energy team based here in Germany. Now one of the sectors I cover is hydrogen, which also plays a very important role at this year's Berlin-based Green Tech Festival, where the UK is partner country. And as part of the festival, we designed these friendship calls to bring the UK and its regions closer to the green tech festival community. Now, when we speak of hydrogen, we absolutely must take a closer look at Scotland, where the Climate Change Conference COP26 will be hosted next year. Scotland is small, but it has an incredibly ambitious net zero target, an outstanding energy supply chain, and one of the best ecosystems for the large scale production of hydrogen in Europe. Now, it's my absolute pleasure to be joined by two industry experts today, Nigel Holmes and Alan Mortimer, who will give us a little bit of an insight into how Scotland is becoming a hydrogen economy. Nigel, let me start with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the importance of hydrogen for Scotland? Lisa, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to you know, join you and your, your colleagues. And um, so my name is uh, Nigel Holmes. I uh, head up the Scottish Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Association. And you know, we're, um, Lisa, as you mentioned, you know, People think of Scotland as a small country, but um, we've actually got a lot, lot happening, especially around decarbonisation. And um, the why, why would Scotland matter to other countries in Europe? Well, I, I was delighted recently to hear that Europe has actually set a new target for decarbonisation. Um, last year, um, it was all very much about people setting the the net zero target. You know. Is it going to be 2050, um, as it is for Europe, 2045 for Scotland, more recently 2060 for China? That's all great, and it sets a very clear uh, ambition in terms of where people want to get to. But I think it's also worth reflecting on how we get there. And the target that, for me, yeah, was really important recently was the EU increasing its 2030 target uh, to 55% greenhouse gas reduction by 2030. And why does that matter? Well, in Scotland, the Scottish Government uh, recently set their 2030 target, and they've gone for a 75% reduction of greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. And what's becoming clear is that as governments are setting these net zero and interim targets, that the role of hydrogen is going to be absolutely critical in delivering climate change. And I think you know, we would hopefully all agree that you know, despite them, there might be some uh, slight political differences uh, that are causing us to maybe drift apart. There are certain challenges, global challenges, which will bring us together and climate change absolutely has to be top of the list. Absolutely, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with you, Nigel. Alan, over to you. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us how your company is leading the way on hydrogen? Surely. My name is Alan Mortimer. I'm Director of Innovation for Clean Energy for Wood. And um, Wood places the, uh, the role of hydrogen and clean hydrogen right at the heart of the energy transition and global decarbonisation. Um, we share the view that it's going to play a pivotal role. Um, and it will do in our view because there are sectors which are hard to decarbonise through just electrification. And there are areas where hydrogen has particular advantages. So uh, we look at transport, especially the heavier transport. So trucks and lorries, trains, um, shipping potentially as well. And even now aviation being talked about in the longer term. So huge opportunities in transport to decarbonise that sector, which has lagged a bit behind power, uh, but also heat and industry. So hydrogen, shouldn't forget, is already a big player in industry, albeit unabated. Uh, but now the prospect is to clean it up through clean hydrogen production and use, um, and also then into the gas network and gas system decarbonisation, which is a huge opportunity and need uh, for, the, for the country, especially in higher latitudes where it's used for heating. 
So we see um, these roles being really pivotal and uh, companies like Wood that cross the various sectors with the engineering expertise to deliver, I think are also important in delivering that. And that's why we see it as a huge opportunity. And, and it's the same, obviously, for Scotland, because Scotland has a lot of that engineering expertise, as well as having the resources to produce the hydrogen and then potentially export it. Thank you, Alan. Now, uh, hydrogen is becoming an integral part of energy strategies all over the world. Nigel, you mentioned it. And the role of green hydrogen um, in particular and the role it can play in, in the path to net zero has been emphasised. Nigel, in your opinion, how does Scotland stand out when it comes to green technology? That's a really, really good question, Lisa. Um, and actually, you know, it's interesting to look at Scotland's history with energy. And, you know, Scotland, you know, really came to the front in terms of uh, manufacturing and industry uh, well over 100 years ago um, in, in the 1800s with the Industrial Revolution. And that was built on coal. And Scotland was lucky. You know, we dig a hole, there's coal. You know, that, that works nicely. Um, and then in the, the 1970s, um, we found oil in the North Sea and gas. So again, Scotland, you're yep, quite lucky. Yeah, we've got the we've got the energy resource. I think for many people in Scotland now, the, the there's a clear indication that you know we've not been lucky just once or twice. We've got three times lucky, and we've got plenty of wind. Um, any of you who've come to Scotland will probably um, you know, sort of uh, back me up on that one. Um, we've got plenty of water, and you know the, the combination of that makes Scotland a fantastic place for um, onshore wind, offshore wind, and actually using that to produce lots of renewable energy. Probably to the extent, and it'd be interesting to get Alan's uh, you know, thoughts on this one, that you know, we can actually produce more renewable energy than we need in Scotland. And then the challenge is, you know, how do we make, you know, can we use all of that energy usefully? Can it help to reinvigorate, you know, not just to deliver the, the climate reduction targets, but to uh, stimulate industry, manufacturing, um, production of um, you know, e-fuels, and, and to what extent does that allow Scotland not just to help Scotland and the UK to, de to decarbonise, but also much more widely around Europe? Can Scotland be one of the locations that produces clean fuels for Europe to actually help uh, Europe to, to meet its targets as well? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Nigel. Alan, you already gave us a flavour of Wood's hydrogen ambition, cross-sector hydrogen ambition. How do the governments in, in the UK and Scotland support these ambitions? Um, I think there is a long history of support for renewables, both UK and Scotland. I would have to say especially strong in, in Scotland. And um, I can trace my early career back to the 90s and the start of the onshore wind industry in Scotland, which has become such a big player. Now it's grown very rapidly. We have a great onshore wind resource. Um, but we're now at the stage where we're producing 90% of our power requirement from renewables. Um, so fairly soon we're going to exceed that. And especially now we have a target for 11 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030. We're going to massively exceed it. So that energy has to, to go somewhere. And we're looking at significant exports through power interconnectors. Uh, but we're also, I think, going to be looking at uh, hydrogen as an export vector to get that energy from offshore to onshore for use domestically within the UK, uh, but also potentially to get it to the industrial heartlands of Europe. Um, and we can see that that could become a viable thing to do with subsea and, uh, and onshore pipelines as well as well as possibly other vectors to move hydrogen around, because there are some challenges to overcome in that regard. Uh, but I do see that policy support has been key to all of this, um, and that the move into hydrogen is a very natural extension for Scotland and for the Scottish government to do, because it continues and fully extracts the value of uh, what they've already done to encourage renewable power production. Great, thank you. And a final question to both of you. Let's start with you, um, Alan, this time. What are you most excited about for the future? Um, well, 
I suppose if I'm allowed, I'll be a little bit parochial. And I think uh, what would excite me would be Scotland fully realising its potential because it has such huge renewable resources still untapped. If you look offshore, it's 10 times as big again as what we've done onshore. So way more than we need. And that can become um, a powerhouse for Europe. So we can be producing Europe's clean hydrogen and clean fuels uh, from here and exporting. So as well as decarbonising the UK, helping decarbonise Europe. Bright future ahead for Scotland. Nigel, what should a green future look like in your books? I think for me, uh, Lisa, you know, you know, we talk about the, the net zero targets. Uh, governments are now starting to think about 2030 targets. I think for me, to, to some extent, some of the, the green future is, is with us already. Um, you know, Alan mentioned the, the very high level of renewable power generation in, in Scotland, which is yeah, fantastic progress. But I think also what we're finding is that as we get towards some of these new ways of um, generating energy, we're recognizing some of the, the changes that need to happen in order to capture that energy effectively. And you know, some of the projects in Scotland, you know, Orkney, for example, which you know, Orkney has been self-sufficient in renewable electricity since about uh, 2013. But they, they've they found their own challenges in terms of um, constraints and managing the system. But in overcoming these constraints, they're actually learning. They're learning how to actually make things work more effectively. And I think that the key the key message I would give is that you know the green future is is with us with us now in some locations. Um, Orkney is ahead of the rest of Scotland. Scotland is ahead of the rest of the UK in terms of the renewable uh, generation um, that's being delivered. But I think learning from what we're doing is really important. And the projects, you know, such as the Big Hit project in Orkney, we've got the work in Aberdeen with the, the hydrogen buses, the vehicles. We've got the, um, the planned projects in Fife for a, a very large and important demonstration of hydrogen for heat, the H100 project. And lots of people talk about you know, hydrogen for heat as being, oh, is this just going to extend the life of the, the fossil fuels? Well, in this case, the hydrogen is going to be produced from uh, wind. You know, so absolutely, the, uh, Alan's comment earlier about using hydrogen for, for heat decarbonisation, absolutely critical. And to deliver the targets, the stretch targets, 55% you know, for the EU, 75% for, for Scotland by 2030, we can't wait until 2030. We've got to get these projects happening now. And that's what we're seeing in Scotland. And we are very open to sharing the lessons that are being learned um, and actually working with people who might be ahead of us in some areas, because we aren't gonna do this individually. It's gonna to have to be a collective effort. And I would hope that the imperative of tackling climate change will bring us all together and actually make it happen. On that note, that's all we have time for today, I'm afraid. Thank you both very much, Alan and Nigel, for taking the time to speak to me today. And to everyone else, watch out for the whole Friendship series um, to see what the other UK regions have to offer, offer on sustainable innovation and green technology. And all that's left to say is cheerio and auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Vielen Dank.